Hey guys. So, um, it's like four o'clock in the morning. Um, my bird just died. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> it's a day and a half later, almost two days later from when you saw that last clip. Um, I really wanted to try and tell you guys what happened like when it was fresh for me, but I couldn't get the words out without crying and probably won't be able to today either, but I'm going to try because I don't want to go through another day of reliving it. Like I want to get it out right now and Danny and I both just broke down because we just recorded a song which you've probably already seen by now maybe you're seeing it after this i'm not sure but we we filmed and recorded a um buddy's favorite lullaby by the way oh no i told you in the last clip my our, our bird our bird not my bird our bird passed away a couple nights ago um And it's funny, we just got done filming Edelweiss, the, her favorite lullaby, and we did like take after take after take because I kept crying, and Danny messed up, and then I messed up, and then my voice cracked, and then I started crying again. Like it was the hardest video I've ever made, actually besides this one, which I know this is going to be hard too. But that was the hardest singing video either of us have ever made. Like I'm surprised we got the footage we did so I hope you guys enjoy it um but anyway so we were like getting impatient and freaked out and like we don't have much left in us we can't do another take this oh I can't do it again I can't do it again and so finally we both were just like wait a minute just stop and breathe and just feel our little baby girl here with us and pretend like we're singing to her and then we did one more take of the last verse and then Danny and I just listened to it back together and we both just started sobbing. So I kind of want to tell you what happened with my bird for a few reasons. Number one, I would like it to be on record, like while it's still fresh in my mind, like I want the story to stay the way that it actually was because you know how sometimes a story, especially a traumatic story like this, um, after so many years it starts to get foggier and foggier and you can't remember details and I personally would like to have those details out there and I thought as long as I'm recording it because I'm not very good at writing I'm not patient enough to write um, that I might as well post the video with you guys because reason number two is that you are her family as well and she's our daughter and make fun of that if you will none of you will maybe one of you will and that's fine um, I understand that not a lot of people get that that's our actual child because we can't have children and our birds are our babies. Um, and she was my firstborn baby, technically. I've had her the longest. What was I talking about? Oh, and also, no wait, was there a third of all? That might have been it, but you get the idea. I just want it out there. Oh, the third of all was so that I, I need to get it out of my body because I keep reliving this over and over and I've not been able to talk about the full story as you can see before I tried and I couldn't do it so I'm hoping I'll be able to do it now and I just want to put a warning kind of like a what was the word they told me to use I don't know just a little warning that if you're um sensitive about hearing animals die you're not going to want to hear this story because I prefer to talk about the details because that's how I am and I know that if I don't then they'll eat me up inside forever so I'm going to be talking about the details of how she died so a few days ago a couple days ago two di what's today yeah two two nights ago around this time I was um laying in bed and I heard buddy buddy is my bird by the way if none of you if some of you don't know what the crap I'm talking about buddy is my bird I have had three birds I've had Buddy, who I got seven years ago. I've had Bungie, which I took from my nieces because they couldn't take care of him. They were too busy. And then I have Lemon, which is still alive and here. So Bungie, the second bird I got, died, 
I think 2012 or 2013. And when he died, it was a very traumatic and also bonding experience for me and Danny. And because of that experience, we were able to know um, and really appreciate, I guess, Buddy's death and what she was going through. Like we knew what was happening this time. We knew how to handle it this time. We knew what to do. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, Bungie's death, however, the first death, went so quickly and Buddy just is stubborn. She always has been. She always will be. She's so stubborn and she just would not go and I'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, I was just laying in bed. Danny was asleep. It was the middle of the night. I think like 2.30 or something like that. And <clears throat> I heard Buddy start like flopping around in her cage like crazy. And she's done that before because she'll fall asleep on her little perch up there. She'll fall asleep and sometimes she'll fall off and it's the funniest thing in the world. And so she'll try and catch herself and she's still like half asleep. She's like, what's happening? What's happening? So sometimes she'll stay at the bottom of the cage for a bit. But they tell you when you get a parakeet bird that if your birds are staying at the bottom of the cage for a long time, that's a really bad sign. That means they're sick. And by the way, when they get sick, you don't have much warning time before they die. They die very, very quickly. As soon as you know they're dying, they will die within a couple hours. So... Be aware of that if you have a parakeet. So anyway, she was flapping around, landed on the ground. She's done it a million times before, and she would usually stay on the ground for a couple minutes just to kind of like wake up and like what happened. But this time she stayed there really, really a long time. And I'm like, that's weird. Should I go check on her? And I'm still laying in bed. I'm like, I, what? that's so weird. And so then she started flapping around again. And I'm thinking to myself, either her her little claw is hooked on the like caught on the bottom rails or she's just freaking I don't know but it just was weird that she was flapping but she wasn't going back up to her perch that's what she would have done in the past so I was like this is sort of strange and I don't know what it is but something just got me out of bed I went over to her cage and she just was barely moving And so I reached my hand in the cage and I felt her and she felt almost lifeless. She felt very lethargic, very like could not move. Um, this is so hard. Gosh, this is hard. I just hated, I hated seeing her in pain. I hated it. So anyway, um, Man, so I reached my hand in and I picked her up and I felt her and I knew right away that she was dying because she felt just like Bungie felt right before he died, like five minutes before he died. So I knew she was dying. So I was just holding her, trying to keep her head upright. And um, I knew then right when I held her, I knew that she had had some seizures, seizures and that's why she was flapping around like crazy. So I went into Danny's room and woke him up and I said, Buddy's dying, Buddy's dying. Holy shiz balls, this is hard. So he came out into the hallway and we both just sat with her and held her in our hands. And every, I don't know, five or ten minutes, she would seize again, have a seizure where she would just flap around and her body would start to like, I don't know, form a certain weird way. It just was really, really weird. Um, when Bungie died, this is something we learned. When Bungie died, he did that too. He would seize up and then right when he died for, for good, like actually died, he got stuck in the position that he died in, which was kind of like this. So that's his head and his head was like even back. And then that's his tail. So he kind of was like curled up backwards, like doing a back bend. And he froze like that after like two minutes. So um, we knew that that's what was happening with her. And so she did that and we would, we said our goodbyes. We said, we love you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for bringing us so much joy and for being our child this whole time. <sighs> Holy fudge.
and then she would and then she closed her eyes and we thought okay that's it but then her heart would still be beating and so when she closed her eyes Danny and I just start sobbing because we know that she's dying she's going and so we sob and her eyes just perk right back up like as if we woke her up or something and this repeated about 20 times so like every five or ten minutes for a couple of hours she would die almost pretty much we knew she was dying she'd have that last seizure we would hear her heart having the heart attack i'll get to that in a minute how you can tell um and then we would say our goodbyes every five or ten minutes and then she would perk back up and look at us and something that i said in the instagram live stream that i wanted to share th that was so special and so sweet um like buddy if you knew her she's just the most stubborn little bird on the planet i love her and miss her and will forever um anyway so uh so yeah so that continued for a while and after a while of that i looked at danny and i said danny is she dying and he said, yeah. And so I closed my eyes and very angrily yelled at Heavenly Father. <laughs> and I was like, Heavenly Father, please. I cannot watch my little baby be in pain anymore. You need to take her because she's not going to go on her own. She's too stubborn. And we both knew. We both knew that she just was being protective of us because that's how she is. Every time I would cry every day and she would be there for me and she would protect me and she would love me and kiss me and cuddle with me and all of those things and so I think every time she heard me cry that's when she would perk back up and just look at me with those eyes and this time she had tears in her eyes which I had never seen before but you could tell that she was in so much pain but that she wouldn't go because she didn't want me to be sad And if any of you out there are pet parents too, then you know what I'm talking about. Like they know you and they know what's going on. And something that also that I shared on the live stream was that um, when I got Buddy, I taught her something, um, which is to, Buddy and I have always communicated with our eyes because obviously she can't talk. I mean, some parakeets can talk, but it's not common, and it's not enough to, like, hold a conversation like some birds can actually do. I can't even believe that. But, so for us, we would just look at each other, and um, we would blink. And when I very first got her, I taught her to blink slowly three times like this. And that that meant, I love you. Because in my family growing up, it's since I can remember, we when we would say family prayers together, we would all be in a circle holding hands and, you know, some of us would like squeeze three times. I love you, you know? And so then I carried that on into my marriage with Danny. So every time we hold hands, one of us always starts, I love you. And sometimes four, I love you too, or whatever, you know what I mean? So I wanted to teach her the three thing and that it was connected with love and I trained her like that and so that always meant something really special to us so every time I start crying she would you know open her eyes again but then near the very end probably the second to last seizure right before her huge heart attack which I'll get to in a minute she looked up at me and a tear actually like A tear actually like streamed down her face and she just looked at me and she went and so I did it back to her and then when I was done she closed her eyes and then and then I started And then I started singing her her favorite lullaby, 
which is Edelweiss, and she just closed her eyes and had, I think, two more seizures, and then she had her heart attack, and how we knew that is because <laughs> um, you could hear her little heart going ch -ch 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 really loud for her, like loud for her. And, and with that, her tail ticked because when they have a heart attack, this, that's another bad sign to watch for. If, you're, if your parakeet's tail ticks a lot, it's usually linked with like a cough or a cold inside. But when they have a heart attack, it is full on, almost 90 degree um, ticking. And it went with the heart and you could hear it and you could see it in her eyes, how much pain she was in. And... I just kept singing. I'm like bawling and trying to sing and I couldn't sing because that's the lullaby that always gets her to sleep and I kept telling her to go to sleep and that she'd feel better if she went to sleep so I just kept singing Edelweiss and and then she had her heart, heart attack and then she had one last seizure where she stiffened up and this time I knew to straighten out her body so that we could make her more comfortable i know she was dead but in my mind mama bird was like no we got we can't let her die like that like we did bungee like we've learned we have a minute or two to straighten her body out so that part was difficult because by that time danny was gone <laughs> bawling snot i mean danny is the sweetest person in the world we all know this but he was so close to buddy we both were and he re she really was like our baby and the entire time over these couple hours that we were both holding her in both of our hands so many times we both just it's like we took turns sobbing and every you know one of us had to be strong while the other one sobbed and that's kind of what happened right when she died the moment she died Danny started sobbing and I was there with her for this strong part trying to be strong so I tried to straighten out her body so that she would stay um, and um, I just remember this is kind of gross but I just remember that um, I'm also sharing this for those of you who have parakeets just be prepared for this because it was really hard for me to grasp not grasp but um, to know to have happen I, I don't know the first time it really freaked me out which is that right before they die all of their insights just relax and everything comes out so we both took turns holding her we held her together and we both just had puddles of her insides <laughs> like guts and not guts I don't think it was guts but it was like all of her held in bathroom and liquid and poo and pee and and other fluids I don't know what it was but it was really gross but we didn't care we just were sobbing and snot was running down because neither of us wanted to let go for too long to blow our noses so we would take turns like it just was such a traumatizing yet bonding experience and that's the same thing that happened with Bungie the first time it really bonded me and Danny together and I'll never forget that and I'll tell you that story another time because it was really special so anyway um so she had her heart attack and died and I just went and found a really pretty box I would show you she's still here I double ziplocked her and put her in the fridge like folded up in a towel because I just want to keep her fresh because we're not gonna be able to bury her till tomorrow and I didn't want her to like decompose because that would be really even worse like even more traumatizing um Gosh, I miss her. Holy crap. <sighs> I can't believe how much I miss her. I can't believe it. Danny too. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, I just wrapped her up in some toilet paper, you know, made her a nice little bed in the little box, and then I put her in a Ziploc so that we could still see her, like, no lid on the box. We just put the box 
inside a Ziploc so I could still see her face and you know I wrapped her up like a blanket with the toilet paper and I made her a little pillow with the toilet paper because I don't know why that was all I could think to do that was the only thing that felt okay to me at the time it's like it was actually my child and I was just swaddling her so she'd be more comfortable in her death I don't know why but I think anyone else would have done the same thing so so then what was really cool um I talked about this on the live stream too but we went into back into our bedroom which is where she and Lemon, my other bird, who's still here, still upstairs, who I just got, I think, six or eight months ago. And, um, that was hard for me, by the way. Like, I, I, never mind. We don't need, you, if you were on live, then you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so Danny and I just kind of, after we washed ourselves, because those, like, the after-death juices that come out are so, um, just so full of bacteria and you can get infected so easy so we had to like scrub our arms and our hands and we threw away the shirts we were wearing because we had held her on our chest and stuff and stuff was coming out so we just after we got all cleaned up we just laid on my bed and snuggled it with her and put her on Danny's chest and just cried and just held her and um Lemon who is normally very skittish and very um bitchy um but I think she's only bitchy because she's just so scared all the time she's so scared all the time and she's also feisty and she'll bite you and like she breaks my skin when she bites like she's a tough little bird buddy was not like that buddy would let me hold her for hours and kiss me and love me and cuddle with me and she would never even if she was mad at me her bites would never hurt but Lemon will break your skin, no problem. She has no problem with it. <laughs> so anyway, it's been harder for me to, con con to connect with Lemon because she won't even let me hold her. It's very rare that she'll let me. So um, usually if we're close to her cage, she'll be skittish and go to the back corner of her cage. But we were just sitting there on the bed and, and laying there and she just kind of came to the front of the cage, probably two feet away from us and just like she knew something was wrong. So Danny got up to go back to bed because he had to work in the morning and I was going to walk him back to his room. So I set Buddy, the dead one, on top of Lemon's cage in the box, in the Ziploc, everything. And we both just kind of stopped and watched for a minute and Lemon just looks up at the um, box of Buddy. She's underneath of it and she's just looking at it and just a little tear started streaming down and she stared at that box for probably 20 minutes and I'm not exaggerating and it was the sweetest thing. I've never seen that from Lemon before. So, um, so later today actually I was cleaning and, um, at one point, I just broke down again and started crying, and I went and sat down on my bed. This is, you know, a day and a half later. I went down and sat on my bed, and I was facing Lemon's cage, and I was, like, feeling so worried. I'm never going to be able to connect with Lemon. She hates me. She's scared of me. This isn't going to happen. This isn't going to work. And then something really special happened. Um... I just sat on the bed and I looked up at Lemon's cage and I said, baby girl, I got something to tell ya. And I said, buddy's gone. She passed away. You're not going to see her again. And I started crying and then Lemon <laughs> comes closer to the front of the cage. So she's like a foot away from me, which is rare for her. Comes up to the cage and looks at me with a little tear in her eye and she goes... And of course I lost it because number one, I never taught that to Lemon. Number two, I've never seen her do that. Number three, we obviously know where that came from. So that was it. I lost it. So after that happened, I was like, what a tender mercy from God that that was. Like, wow. 
and that's kind of when I got the strength to go leave the house and run some errands and that's when I went on Instagram live and found so much love and support and yeah so that was my day today but anyway so so buddy's dead to wrap up <laughs> I can joke right because it's my own child or my own bird uh, anyway so anyway um yeah so Okay, I got through it. I lived. Are, are we all alive? I hope so. So I guess I just want to say that if, if I haven't posted that singing video of me and Danny singing Buddy's Lullaby, um, I don't know if you'll see it before or after, but if you do, just, um, just know that that means so much to us and it was really hard to do. So um, if you are one of those trolls out there, I am begging you with Molly, all of the hearts inside and my dead bird's heart to please not put any hate on that video um, because I will be reading the comments because I know that I will get so much love and support and it's so hard to scroll through the love and support and see people who are just trolling. I'm not talking about people who have their own opinion or have constructive criticism. I'm talking about people who are truly there to hate on me and troll me and um, really jab at me where they know it will hurt me. So I'm telling you that I'm already a sensitive person, but right now, just please, I'm begging you, please don't because I need nothing more right now than to go through the comments and read the good comments right now. So um, I would just ask that you respect that just this once, just this once. And if this happens again, I'll probably ask you again. But right now, please, please don't. I can't handle it right now. So um, yeah. So anyway, there you go. There's the story. I should end it before I start crying. I'm already going to start crying because I was about to say, I was about to say, <laughs> there's the story of my bird dying, and right when I heard that before I said it, I started crying inside, and I'm like, don't cry out loud, because I can't cry anymore, I'm gonna get more cry grains, and I'm gonna hurt for days and days, and then I won't be able to get up and be productive, and I need to be productive right now, because I have a lot going on in my life that needs production, and I can't be crying in bed all day long, and that will keep me sick, and that will make me even sicker, and... There you go. So I'm going to go now before I start crying and I love you guys and thanks for hearing my story and supporting me and just again please don't make fun of me if you're out there anybody who wants to troll me tonight just don't. Um, it's really hard enough to know that we um, that we can't have children and to know that we put every ounce of parenting that we knew into that bird and she was our baby girl and we love her and miss her very much so yeah anyways i'll see you guys tomorrow and remember forever and always that you are beautiful you are worth it and i do thank you for watching bye